All right. Hello, everybody. Um, and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There's so many people to help me out that I want to pay the favor for to help you out as much as I possibly can. All right. So the topic of the day that I want to talk about is, is innovation actually profitable? Does it make sense? It seems like it's like kind of like a no-brainer, right? You might hear popular press, you know, make more money, um, that, um, you know, innovation is good for the economy. If you're looking at from the economy level, um, that, you know, the predictor of, of, you know, global progress is innovation. Um, you think about all of the, the companies that you imagine in your head, they're probably somehow innovative, right? You think of like Google and Disney and, um, I don't know, General Electric back in the day, uh, I, you know, Facebook companies is being highly innovative that it's related to profitability. Now, the thing, it is... Um, there is a relationship between how much you spend on uh, research and development and profitability. That is one thing that we do know. However, um, this relationship is not as linear as what people would think, right? It's not like you just um, spending money on research and development and then all of a sudden, you know, you get something innovative and all of a sudden you make a bunch of money. Um, that's not what happens. There's a in fact, many companies that spend a lot on research and development actually end up not well. Um, they can be un completely unprofitable. Uh, we can just look at startups, for example. Most, many startups don't last that long. They're highly innovative. They're doing really cool and interesting things, but they don't last that long. Um, you know, if we look at at you know, the amount of entrepreneurship of people doing things that are that are super interesting, they tend to die out really quickly. What are the entrepreneurs, the sole proprietors, entrepreneurs that, that, you know, last a long time? They're doing something that everybody else knows about. And it's nothing really innovative in any sort of way. They're doing things like a lawn mowing, right? They're babysitting. They're doing things like starting a little corner store or an automobile dealership, you know, very simple things that you would be like, yeah, that's not really all that innovative in any sort of way. And yet they do extremely well. Um, so we need to think about like, you know, what is going on here, right? So innovation, what I'm talking about is the creation of something that's new and different that hasn't existed in the market before. Uh, Uh, and, and generally, I'd be thinking about, you know, is profitability the best metric to look at for innovation in terms of its impact? No, um, you know, that's one impact. But we might think about, like, how is our world improved? What value did it actually provide? Um, we might think about, you know, things like, did it, uh, you know, did did, did did it sort of uh, reduce the amount of time that people spend on doing something? Did it allow us to spend more time with our family? You know, things like this that are probably better indicators of, of performance of innovation. Does it make us happy? Um, you know, does it make us smile? Does it provide joy? Uh, you know, you think about the most innovative company that I know of, or one of them is Disney. And, you know, A, yeah, it's profitable, but who the hell cares about the profitability of Disney? We care about the fact that it brings us joy and makes my kids smile. Um, you know, that ultimately that's, and, and the profitability is a result of the fact that it brings me joy and makes me, my kids smile. So, 
you know, this idea of innovation leading to profitability, it's, it's a tricky thing to sort of um, tease apart. And what I'm getting at is that there's many steps involved and there's many things. Anybody that has done anything that's innovative or t- tried to do anything that's, you know, a little different from the marketplace is going to tell you that it is really hard to create a profitable business in response to something that's innovative. So, um, you know, what's the difference that's going on between them? There's, there's a lot of factors. It's, you know, why a company actually is, is, you know, profitable in the market because of innovation compared to another one that's not. There's a lot of reasons, some of it having to do with the ways that we actually measure this. It's hard to measure that. And the companies that we typically look look at for researchers, and this is a bias, is a problem on our fault, um, and because it's hard to get data on on other companies, we look at companies that are already successful. We look at S and P five hundred index fund, or we look at S and P five hundred firms. So firms have already made it into the public markets, and then um, we look to see at does innovation actually cause performance in those in those firms. Um, and, and generally, of course, you're going to see that result, that innovation leads to performance within those firms, because that's what they do. They became successful because of some lucky break with the innovation that they created. Um, so, you know, that there is there is a compound there that's really hard to sort of tease apart. Um, and we as, as researchers are aware of that. We tried to sort of tease that apart and look at that. But, you know, another thing is looking at all the other sort of factors that go on in between a company, right? Regardless of being able to mark, measure this stuff and capture it and all that kind of stuff, which is a big problem. And we really do care about that. And we, care far, we probably care far too much as researchers. But, you know, it's thinking about all these other contextual factors that matter, right? Like it's what industry are you in? Like just to stay current in some industries, you have to be innovative and yet you might be falling behind. Um, even if you're really innovative, right? Like if you were doing something in the newspaper industry years ago, you, you just even doing something a little bit innovative, like maybe having a blog, you'd be considered, Oh my God, this is like a real big thing. Um, and yet we know that like things have massively changed from there. But if you would have been the, you know, the one newspaper that started a blog and really pushed at it and, and went full force, making that transition back in the early 2000s, you would have been doing OK now. Um, you know, the other thing is to think about. But but, you know, so it depends on the, the marketplace that you're in. Right. Like how innovative do you actually have to be? How much do you have to spend on it? You know, big thing is thinking about picking the right, um, you know, products and services to to innovate on. That's that is really hard uh, to know what you should do. And and you know, many companies, many managers that are outstanding, they try and they often don't win. Right? They don't sort of pick the thing that is going to become innovative in any sort of way, the product or service that is in or profitable, right? And so part of, um, you know, part of the innovation game is really just numbers, right? It's counting the number of things that you've tried. Um, it is trying as many things that are kind of uniquely different and, and then just counting it up. You've tried 15 different things. You know that your success rate is one out of 10. Well, you're probably going to get like one, maybe two things that are, okay right like they're they're kind of working um another thing is thinking about like waiting long enough and and working at something long enough to create something that that does turn into a commercializable product part of you know what what i stress in my research um is really just working at something knowing that it just doesn't work like you know like everything that we start um sucks Right. Like um, if you you're not going to play um, the Major League Baseball, you're going to be in Major League Baseball when you start off as the first year that you start, you're going to start in T-ball. And so we know that and you suck. Right? <laughs> like I'm, I'm slightly older kids now, but they're very cute to watch when they're in T-ball, but they suck. 
And so you have to sort of apply the same thing of thinking about like, um, you know, when you create something, it's going to be not good at the beginning. It's a myth to think that you are going to create something that is going to be a win right at the get go. That is a total myth. Um, you're, if you believe that you are, you know, out to lunch, basically you're, you're picking at something that, um, you're winning the lottery at that point. And you really are like those people, the, the firms that like explode at the beginning, you're winning the lottery because then that doesn't happen. Um, but instead you often have to whittle away at something for a long time and make it like better and incrementally better, right? You have something that is maybe introduce it to the market and it's, it's too different or, you know, people don't see it and you whittle away at it and you get a little better and a little better and a little better, right? We know that with LCD displays, uh, when they came out, there were just green screens that were terrible. You put that in calculators. Now we see LCD screen screens that are, that are absolutely amazing, right? The color clarity and, and what it looks like. It looks like it's, it's living. It's almost better than real life on some of these LCD screens. And it just kind of whittled away, right? You whittle and whittle and whittle away at this. And it takes a heck of a long time, but you get to the point where you actually become, you create something that is, that is way better than what you had in the first place. Um, so that is one part of it, but you know, the tricky part with that is knowing that you are going to create something and not give up on it. The problem is most people give up on it. You look at all the stuff um, from 2000 with the dot-com bust. Most of those companies that went bankrupt, um, they actually probably were pretty good ideas. They, they weren't necessarily like terrible ideas. They just were at the wrong time. And we needed to wait for another 10 years or 15 years for them to actually come into fruition. Um, so that's an important thing to also remember with innovation, right? Like it's, it's a, a lot of sort of contextual factors that are going on. Another thing is thinking about like the culture of the company, right? Like what does it, and, the, and you can see all of this kind of plays together, right? Like the, the culture of a company can really matter in terms of whether something is killed off right away, whether something you're, you're going to whittle away at something, you know, are you going to be proud of this thing? Like Disney is very good at, at doing some of these things where, um, you know, they, they go in a wing and a prayer and for some reason, you know, they create this thing and it turns into something that's pretty cool. Not all their stuff is like that, but, but all, some of the stuff is like that. So we have to think about what does that mean, um, you know, the culture of the company? And, and you know, because innovation is, is prone to failure, it's prone to making a lot of mistakes, you're prone to screwing up all the time and you don't know what you're doing, you really need to have a, a culture that is very positive to be okay with that. You're essentially, the way that I explain it is you're taking... Um, and I do this, right? I'm building the reciprocity project. I'm taking 10 to 15% of everything that I make, throwing it out the window, right? Just wasting it, wasting it on, on, a, on a product or a project that um, is currently not profitable. Uh, you know, it's, it's got not that many users, right? It's got some, but not like what you would think. Um, you know, like all of those kind of things, you're just, that's what you do right? Like that's how you innovate is you waste money, right? You look at what Google does and they've got all these pie in the sky ideas and throwing it, they're wasting money and you have to be okay with that. Um, and it's hard, right? Like I have a lot of conversations with my wife about it, um, about the reciprocity project or I, or I did now and gotten to the point where we really don't talk about it, which is probably not great. Um, but you know, it's, it's a hard process where you're wasting money, um, or it feels like you're wasting money building this thing out. Right. Um, and, and that's, that's part of what's, that's, that's the challenge with, um, anything that's innovative and you might build this thing. You might invest a million dollars or $2 million and it does not work. It never happens, but you got to be okay with that. And not many people are okay with that. And that's okay. Right. Like you have to think about that. So, you know, what I'm getting at is innovation on the sort of macro side over the course of many decades 
um, over the course of, you know, enough people and enough companies, it, it, there is a relationship, there's a positive relationship with positive um, profitabilities, as far as I know. Um, you know, I, I'm, this is not a systematic review of the literature and to get this estimate, but from what I understand, um, there's a relationship there. The more you spend on, in, um, you know, research and development, the more you spend on sort of innovation activities, the more profitable you're going to be. The problem is, is that spending on innovation activities is really hard and uh, you need to have the right context. You need to be at the right situation. You need to have the right team. You need to have the right culture. You need to have all these different factors that come into play to lead to that profitability. So your immediate, you know, if you do something immediate, the immediate return is often not there, right? Like you don't get that immediate return. It is not profitable often. For anybody that's tried anything that's innovative of any sort of way, you're going to say, that was a waste of my time. Well, was it? Um, you know, you're learning different things. You're building that capability to, to, to do different things, but we don't see it that way. So, you know, my point is, is um, there is not a direct relationship to, you know, doing more innovation doesn't necessarily lead to more profitability. There's a lot of factors at play. You need to be okay with wasting, um, you know, wasting resources, money, whatever. You need to be okay with that. Um, you need to be okay with, with um, you know, dealing with a lot of failure and, and getting yourself up and getting going. Like, there's so many different factors that come into play that we don't talk about. And that are, it's the real world that gets you. Right? It's like education. Innovation is very similar to education. There is a strong relationship between education and making more money. Right, It's something like every year of education you get it equals to like ten thousand dollars beyond college. Right, so um, if you if you do ten years of college, you make one hundred thousand dollars. It's kind of like the average, right? But that is not a causal relationship. The more education you get in a lot of areas. Um, you know, basket weaving doesn't necessarily equate to, to value, although that's probably changing with Etsy. Uh, but, you know, to value creation or making more money, it's not profitable often. So we need to think about all these different contextual. The problem is, is the life factors that matter. And we really need to start taking those seriously and what that actually looks like to make it um, profitable. So don't ever mistake in that, that you know, doing innovation is not easy and it's not a, a quick win in any sort of way. There's a lot of things that you have to consider in terms of your life and, and the situation um, that you need to really think about whether it's actually going to be profitable. And at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, if it's not profitable, is that fine with you? Um, and if it's fine, then then that's great, right? Like, that's that's your thing, right? Like for me, instead of buying a, a damn Porsche or a Ferrari or whatever the hell, you know, like these old people do at my age, um, I'm, I'm buying, you know, building a, a project that I think is cool and useful. So I apologize for the guest that's waiting there. Um, I'm at my designation, my destination, and I, I thank everybody that's listened. Um, Jason, SA, Tattoo, Michael, Chris, Dark, Carl, Lewis, again, I love your name, uh, Israel, Mike, Clint, again, um, Coach, Alan, Lisa, Jenny, and JY, Suki, and Bobby. Thanks so much for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. Keep uh, fighting the good fight and keep doing good stuff. All right, take care and have a wonderful day. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate you.